All right, guys, so I got a viewer with an energy, and he contacted me because his roof was damaged. Really nice guy. And I think the guys are gonna start the job here shortly. So this is a rubber roof. It's definitely at the end of its life, sort of say. Uh, you can see where water's been pooling. I'm sure that rubber goes underneath. We'll find out when we, when we take it apart. But like many of these roofs, he hit branches and it got torn. So he's gonna get a new roof installed. The only thing that's gonna be a little bit different is that I think this front, you can kind of see that seam to that seam. Let's see right there and right there. If we, uh, I don't know if you can feel that, it's very, very loose and probably a little rotten. There's a good chance we will have to uh, repair some rot right there. I may not be able to record this entire thing, but I'll check back in. Maybe when it's torn apart and we'll see how it looks. Well, this energy, they're starting to pile apart. Wish I could always be everywhere I need to be and see everything. You coming up, Chad? Yeah. Okay. So we already looked at it before. The uh, roof got torn like these uh, rubber roofs are prone to. We got it all stripped off. How's the rot look up front? Um, not great. <laughs> not ideal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, would you say the... Uh, They put the uh, rubber under the front cap. Oh, that much. It's almost like water went straight under there and under the wall. But if this was on top of here and it came loose, it was just gone over there and just a couple little holes. You know what? I keep feel like I keep saying that for some reason. Like a broken record, James. I'm a broken record here. So the, I guess probably today the rubber will be pulled, pulled off. Well, at that point, be able to see how bad the roof is right there doesn't feel so good right now but the good news is I got my best guys on it Micah oh. there it is a little quick update and then uh, next time we check in hopefully the, uh, the rubber will be off well looks like I missed a big chunk of it well, looks like you got it coming up pretty okay there's only one spot that took a nice piece of wood with it. Doing the old uh, strip method. Find that the easiest. It is the easiest method. Just cut it in strips. It'll come off a lot easier than trying to put it off as a big old heart. It is nice if it bakes in the sun a little bit too. You see all that powder coming off in there. That's the white layer. So it looks like uh, snow. Nice. Let me get out of your way, Micah. You're doing great. Well, we can get a better view of it right here. It's definitely some rot that got through because, again, that rubber just shot the, uh, the water up into the uh, front cap. It has damaged the sidewall a little bit, but this is a metal-sided trailer, so it's not too vital because this is actually spacers for the metal. But the frame that should be, as far as the header goes, about here, is no longer there. So this will have to be rebuilt a little bit more than we had hoped for. good news is that framing doesn't look too bad. The one next to it does look bad, but so if I were to go underneath right here, so this is the problem we run into. All right. These are the holes where the uh, molding was going through the metal and into the roof, but 
there's no framing underneath right there so it was only going into this 3 8 inch uh, plywood and so those screws don't hold on to anything tight they get loose the molding comes loose the water goes underneath it and you start rotting so when it was built it should have had a, a piece of framing underneath the deck right there all it needed was a 2 by 2 just like one of these but of course they chose not to do that at energy now we're gonna have to do something so right here at this vent you can kind of see what I'm talking about but you can see back here there's a framing this is the truss so when the screw goes into the deck at the front it was only going into uh, this plywood and of course that's not a lot of threads for the uh, the screw to grab but if they would have had some frame just underneath it it then would have cinched, cinched really tight and then that molding would not have come loose and of course if the rubber was over the top even if the molding did come loose you wouldn't have had that rot all right well there's some of that rotten wood we were talking about pretty good kindling it's not gonna hold much and that's gonna be the front right there so the ceiling's definitely damaged but it's just gonna be very cosmetic that's gonna be the wallpaper right there Trying to replace the ceiling is one of the hardest things to do in an RV because the entire roof rests on it. So he's gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, reframe that all the way front to back. And uh, call it good. So that's what these things look like, all taken apart. That's what they look like. So that insulation pulled back out of the way. Now we can maybe see what's going on a little bit more. So this would be the header. Well, it's not even really a header because this is uh, the roof. The header will be underneath it, right about there. So obviously that framing side to side needs to be replaced. Uh, this one right here is damaged. We'll see how far the customer wants to go with any sort of repair on the side. And we can't truly replace this entire piece all the way back. What we have to make the decision is, let's see. Let's see, the rot pretty much ends right where that hole would have been. So we should be able to Put a, uh, a frame across right there. Maybe put a dotter across it. That way it becomes a little bit stronger. And then reframe from that point. A lot of it just depends on how much the uh, the owner wants to go into it and take it apart. Because to try to uh, take this piece of metal off, remember these are, uh, these are built from the top down. So the last piece is the bottom one. So in order to get this piece off, all those pieces below have to come up. So that'd be quite a big uh, expense. Basically, to take the entire side, the side wall apart just to uh, try to rebuild this frame. So the hope is that we could maybe peel back enough to get where we need to get. There's the rotten deck right there, and uh, yeah, and that's why it's getting replaced right there. So I have one of my biggest. Uh, Concerns about coating a roof or uh, doing a uh, bed liner type of a uh, roof on an RV is that you're really only doing that because the roof's at the end of its life and likely there's some issues on it. And if you're just coating the top of it and you're not taking a look and see what's going on underneath, you might have a lot of rot or, or, or structural issues. Ooh. What you got going on in there, Chad? I'm gonna pull these screws out so I can pull that one rotten one by three out. Oh, that's what's holding the cabinet up. Just, just. There are side screws in the sides. Okay. Oh, yeah, underneath, probably in the side, too. Yeah, in the bottom should have something. Because there's nothing over here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so I'm assuming that if it hasn't fallen down yet, it's not going up. Because, well. 
into anything. Those are the, the rotten, rotten right there. You can see all the rot that came out just from shaking the <laughs> cabinet. Right. Mm -hmm. Kind of see the uh, the ceilings a little bit weathered. Yeah. But as long as you don't poke your finger through it, don't poke your don't, finger. Don't it. poke it. Or you own it. That's man law. <laughs> man law. I mean, it's still probably screwed or right here. It's got a staple on the end. Hey, look at that. I made a pony stick. Primitive Chad. Almost looks like it's on, it goes on fire at one time. Almost. Weird. Water and fire do the same kind of damage. That's Circle K. Uh, see, I can throw wood around too, Chad. Oh, not competition, James. I know, I win. And I just have to reframe it. It's just simple. Simple. It's so simple. Here goes the rebuild. First piece. Oh, that's that. Second. That's first. That's second. Now we can start framing. lumber you know they make two by fours with with dowel pins connecting them now to reduce thermal bridging and then it's filled with foam it looks just like that you like when you got the raptor pop it in oh yeah you can push it down flush using that screw using torque and leverage that's better than using your hand your hand is a hammer yeah I still do that, unfortunately. And you can do it backwards. If it's low, screw it in and just pry it up and it sucks it up. You're so smart. Ah, it's YouTube. Shh, don't give away the secrets. This is the front frame. This is a nailing surface for that cabinet underneath. So now it's a little bit better so the cabinet can screw in at the top. And we're gonna put one more across to, cur uh, to right where this goes into. So hopefully this shouldn't ever be an issue in the, in the future because Oh, that was holding it down was uh, this plywood before. So now we can use longer screws, go into framing. Now it should be toit. A toiger. Ugh. What you doing there, Chad? Foaming a thingy. Foaming a thingy? You can use that as an adhesive? You know it. Do you know I learned this trick from um, manufactured homes? They use a foam adhesive to uh, cool. glue drywall to, to uh, trusses. That way they don't have so many screws popping. I mean, this is 100% original idea. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Hold that. My guy. So this is the last little bit of framing to go on there. This will be the nailing surface for the uh, roof. What? Now it'll just fill the gap, and it's not vital. It didn't have to be there, but it doesn't hurt. And then hopefully we won't have uh, water going in the front cap again. It's very nice of you to add a little bit of uh, insulation. You're so good. They call me Nice Guy Chad. Nice Guy Chad. I've... That's just the ceiling right there, and now. When this cures, it'll be stuck. After this, add the the, uh, the insulation, fiberglass batten insulation, put the deck on, and then we'll put a roof on. Just mark that so we know where to, when we put that on, where to staple. You're so good, Chad. Try sometimes. My marks there, put the thing on there, put it, snap a line across the other marks, and we're good.
Magic insulation somehow makes everything better. Start at the center. This does have a crown. Ready? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know either. Okay, so now when this comes down, look at that, it's gonna screw right there. Yeah. Alright, so there it is. It's been reframed. We got a new deck. And even though I can't see it, yeah. there's a weird sort of curve on there. By design. By design. So, we lay down there. It's got a compound curve on it. Should be nice and strong now. Of course, we want to try to ensure this won't happen again with the whole water going under the front cap. So we're going to go ahead and staple this down because we have that to staple it to. And then when we put the roof on, the rubber will go over the top of that, and then the molding will go on top of the rubber. Now, if this lets and if this lets go, the molding lets go, the roof will act as a shingle directing on top of the metal. That's the idea. Chad thinks it's a great idea. Great idea. Great idea. <laughs> Mike also agrees. All right, so we're gonna do a uh, rubber roof. Got it, first time. So that's, that's a pretty big snake you got there, Chad. So, so it's rubber, because it, you can tell because it's black on the backside, and it's, well, this one's dove, but I don't think you'll find a difference between dove and white. It's a little bit more gray than it is white. Fiber. You know the drill, Chad, we just roll it out. Make sure we're on there square, then we'll roll it back halfway and glue it down. You know, like we do. You know, same like, old, same old. like we do. The good old glue method. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> First time with the razor blade? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think we're a little short at the back, though. Oh, too <laughs> oh well, too bad. Now, do you want to roll it from the back and do the back first? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, it's, makes sense. That's where the uh, lift and the scaffolding is. Yep. All right, so now we just pull this back like a big bed sheet onto itself. All right, we pretty even on the sides? I don't know. I think it needs to go your way a little bit. Oh, too far. You did it. Ah, perfect. Look at that. Our edge is lined up fine. Now, we just put the glue down and roll it forward. Just like every other one of these videos. I think I've seen that once or twice. Well, the best thing about this method is that you don't have to stand on the roof when you do this. Except me. I'm just pouring it out. Someone's got to do the hard work. It's not going to be me. Hey guys, Chad needs to catch up. Always. Mike needs to catch up. All right, Chad needs the mustard. You know what? I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. You're so punny. Ha. Ha ha. Ha. Oh, am I? No. Oh, you got a bubble at the end. All right at the end. Right at the end. Oh, it's gone. All right, magic brush. Where we take it to? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Right about here, because that's where you had to reach to. Up there? Yeah. It's almost like you haven't brushed your side.
Uh, keep going forward. Well, the good news is with the wet on wet method like this, it takes a couple days to actually get really dry. So if you screw up, you can always pull. You can, you can pull it back off again. Especially if you do it in the shade like uh, we're doing here. All right, now we just pull it back the other way. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go, you found the glue. Great, look at that. Somebody stepped right there. I don't know whose shoes those are. Definitely not. Not mine. I mean, maybe they're mine. They're mine. See, I swear I do work, guys. I don't know how to do this, though. How do I do this again? Oh, come on, you're a boomer broomer. Come on. <laughs> Just getting all the air out of there so this glue can cure correctly. If I could get my words right. It's okay. I always get it wrong. But the rest yeah. of the roof there is looking yeah. pretty good. What? Good job, James. Good job, Chad. Chad didn't help. Did you bring, us, did you bring us the waters at least? Part time. Of course, the key to doing this so we don't get ballooning is because we want to make sure that we get wet on the rubber itself. We don't want it just to uh, be like a sticker. We want it to be incorporated. Wet on this, wet on the deck. And then they become one. All right, well, now the new membrane is down. We'll let that cure and put it all back together. There's nothing special about putting this back together. We're gonna go ahead and uh, probably skip ahead to this whole thing being done because you saw this, the deck rebuild and the, the, the membrane put down. Everything else is pretty standard. All right, it's making great progress, putting everything on, right, Micah? Uh, sure, 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 sure. So here we go again. We're gonna go. The rubber's gonna go over the top of that cap now. So there's the metal that would be uh, part of the cap. And now the molding's gonna go over the top of that. Now, if you remember, we actually put some framing in right here. So these screws will actually grab onto more than just the uh, the, the plywood there. Uh, the plywood. It'll grab into the uh, the frame that we put on. We framed it. Because we framed it. Just like Chad said. <laughs> he has to put a black tank in. Ha 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 at least once a uh, year. So we're just using these, uh, I don't know, number eight, two inch long ones. So this would be plenty long enough to go through the deck and into the frame. It should clamp everything down nice and well. Oh, that feels good. Sorry, Chad, give me a couple more seconds. Uh, ah story of my life. All right, so now with that down, you know, I get a little pushback that the rubber's gonna get ballooned up, but I don't know if you can see the profile of that molding. It actually has a lip on it right there. So now that lip is actually clamping down, so it's actually, it's making a pretty good uh, seal just using the rubber as a gasket. And then it's gonna be underneath that right there. So. We're going to still come back and seal on both sides. So again, air would have to get underneath everything 15 times. And because this is clamped down really well to framing, I never had an issue with ballooning. All right, and so there it is. Now, if it uh, comes up loose, it's not going to the wall this time, not going to the ceiling. It's just going onto the metal here. Other than that, just have to finish putting it back together. We'll be done here shortly. Okay, so we're just finishing sealing up here. You can see this front here gets sealed really well. I like to fill the corners so that water doesn't pool on the corners either. So I use the sealant itself to be a permanent pooling so water can't get there. But now it's just going to be checking this roof periodically to make sure that uh, sealant's not cracking or missing or torn. Uh, we just have to get a new AC gasket to put on there. Okay. 
New seal on there, guys. Good job. Very nice. Look at that. Brand new roof. Another 15 years, right? Right. How's it going, Micah? You getting tired of roofs, too? Yes. <laughs> too many roofs, too close together. Yes. Indeed. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. 2006 Energy Toy Hauler Travel Trailer. Uh, this was uh, another rubber roof job. Mostly because the front area got rotten from, obviously, the... Uh, that front molding coming loose. The front molding came loose because there was nothing other than the 3 8 plywood that was holding down that molding. Molding came loose. And of course the front of this one sloped down so water's just going to run down to the front underneath that front cap and rot everything out. Now there is definitely damage in the front wall and in the ceiling but to rebuild that was going to be honestly more than the cost of the, of the trailer at that point. The interior cosmetically looks okay. It is, it is weak on the ceiling. Right there, you can kind of see there's definitely some water damage. You can see the remnants of the uh, <laughs> of the damage in there too, where water was coming in. But now it's a lot stronger, a lot better. But uh, this will last another 15 years now that we got that situated. And of course we did add framing across so that now that molding is actually going into some, uh, some framing underneath there. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I think this is the uh, sixth roof this month. I'm tired. Now much like that uh, bounder roof job, that was another... Uh, viewer that asked me to help out and I was really backed up and wasn't able to help. Same story in this one. I, I popped in as much as I could to help out. The guys here at Cassones will finish up and uh, unfortunately I have to head out of town. It's another rubber roof replacement. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It's looking really good. It should last another 10 years minimum, 20 years if they take care of it. Thanks a lot for watching guys. No, not that way. Oh. There you go. I feel bad just watching you do this. Well, I mean, I don't feel that bad. Even with the sticks I put in there, <laughs> so I can climb up it. I think we start at the back because the pipes are in the front. Probably right. Yes, I need a conda. <laughs> there you go. Wanna, look, it's unless you got buns, hon. <laughs> Rubber roof. I'm gonna like get it. I'm like gonna get it. Like a man, you gotta make it. Ah, it was my shin. If only you were in knee pads. <laughs> Look at that. Need a hammer? Fist your hammers. You know, one day you're going to regret doing that with your hands all the time. I know I do. There's still good wood on that. Yeah, for burning. Later. Later. Well, they use a screw on that one. I told you that. They didn't use a screw on the other side. Is screw on my All right. Fine, 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 fine. Stop. Stop. Stop it. That was my plan to look uncomfortable. Even with those screws out, like these are still in. I don't know if you can see how loose that whole molding is. It's really surprising that the factory used one inch screws. These are way too short to be holding uh, these are way too short to be holding that on because they're only going in that far on the framing. We want to go deep all the way through that frame. Wouldn't you say Chad? Deep is the abyss. Deep is my soul. I mean it's only going in like that much. That's stupid.